welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my chili plants. I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking what have you done, they're absolutely dead, there's no way of them coming back, but I'm pretty confident these will recover. I'll also tell you why they look so bad right now and why they're almost dead and how I've not really been able to look after them to wear in the last few months. Basically there's, there's four chilies here, three types. We've got um, Piri Piri chili, chili on the back here, which is actually quite a large one. You can see that's a normal kind of size chili. The other three here are dwarfs. We've got uh, two Apaches, which are these two here. And we've got a Canetta as well. And the Canetta uh, is this dwarf, but it tends to have a lot larger chilies. You can see they're a decent size there. The Apaches are very small, very hot. And the um, Piri Piri's tend to be very small chilies, um, but very good heat level as well. You can see that one there. So um, the reason these are looking so horrendous right now is because I've not been able to look after them very well recently. That combined with the fact that it's winter, so there's been almost no light whatsoever. But it's now February, the sun's just starting to warm up again, so these should be able to be grown again without too many issues. The main reason that neglect has caused them to die is I've not been able to water them as much as usual. Basically I'm in the process of moving house, and so I've not been able to keep track of them. Sometimes I'll be away for a week at a time, these have dried out, almost completely died. That's really stressed the plants. Also, they had thrips for quite a long time. Most of the thrips are now gone. Um, you can probably see some of the thrip damage. It's this kind of, it, it causes the leaves to go kind of silvery. I think most of the thrip damaged plants have actually died. Or I should say the thrip damaged leaves have died. Um, this one seems to get away without getting infected too badly. Hopefully you can see in the middle of that leaf there's some slight silvery markings, but that's from the thrip damage. But what's also come recently is the aphids, and the aphids kind of appeared out of nowhere. They bred like crazy, and they've what they're, they're what really has finished this off. So I'll show you a close up here, so you can see some of those aphids on this plant. You can see their stems absolutely covered, all the life being sucked out of the plant. So although it looks like a lost cause. I'm moderately confident these should respond quite well and grow again. Uh, chilies and pepper plants, they can look really bad in winter, but they can come back quite well. So what I'll do is I'll harvest all the chilies that uh, are hopefully still edible. And um, the rest of them I will have to bin. Some of them have dried out. Often I will still eat them if they dried out on the plant, but these have dried out over winter time. And so the drying process would have been quite slow and it's probably not so safe to eat them. So there's a few chilies here that I can still eat, so I'll harvest them. To get these plants back to a good shape, I'm going to have to cut off a lot of the material. There's a few reasons for that. Normally I would cut them hard anyway at this time of year, because that encourages new growth, and it gets them ready to go into spring. If you leave them quite long, unless you're going to keep repotting them into bigger pots, they're, um, they're not really going to grow that strong, and they're just going to stay the same size, because the root to the shoot ratio is kind of already set from the last year's growth, because of the size of the pot. So if you cut the stems quite hard, they have much more roots compared with shoots. That encourages lots of new growth, and then you have lots of new leaves and new, um, new peppers. If I did just leave them this size, what tends to happen is they grow a lot of flowers, not many leaves, and then when there's too many uh, fruit for the amount of leaves they have, they just kind of dwindle away, don't really do too well. You don't get enough energy for the amount of uh, peppers they're putting on. All the energy goes into peppers, you'll get a good early crop, but long term over the summer it doesn't tend to be as good. So I'm going to cut them really hard back now. This also removes a lot of the, the, the pests as well. And if I've got a small area, it's going to be a lot easier to treat any of the remaining pests that are left on that plant. So that's some more trim back. It's also imp important to take off any of the dead leaves on the plant and also on the soil. That's because that's often a place where the, the uh, thrips and other insects will lay their eggs. And so that's a good place to make sure they're not hiding in there. Also some of the adults can hide in the dead plant material. Often as well, it's quite good to take off the top layer of soil or replace that if you've got thrips, because the thrips often lay their eggs into the soil and they have a, a part of their life cycle in the soil. But um, for now, what I'm going to do, breathe these all with some isopropyl alcohol, or otherwise known as swabbing alcohol. That's to kill off most of the pests. I'm then going to keep a close eye on them. Any new growth that comes through, I'll regularly spray it with a soap spray. That's to kill off any remaining insects that's come through. Um, soap spray works really quite well on the aphids. The, the thrips it doesn't work quite so well on. 
but uh, certainly the aphids it works quite well on. So the actual soil, I'm not going to change this, not yet anyway because there's going to be a lot of roots in there with quite a lot of energy. That's all the energy from the roots are going to get poured up into the new shoots for lots of new leaves. So these should start regrowing quite quickly. These two maybe not so much because these two are really stressed. Uh, not any leaves were left in them so they've maybe already been trying to regrow leaves. So these might have barely any energy left in the roots. And these two at least should have quite a lot of energy in the roots. Once it has a good amount of leaves, I'll then cut off half the compost and half the roots, put in fresh compost, because the compost from last year will be getting quite old now, so it needs new compost to be refreshed with. But if I did that now, it would stress the plant out, which is already really stressed, and it'll be much more likely to die. So I'll be doing that later on once it starts putting some good growth again. So that's all for this update. As I say, it doesn't look good at all, um, but I'm moderately confident these will come through. I'm still in the process of moving house, so... Um, I won't be able to give them the amount of care I would normally, so there's still a chance that these will die. But I'll give you guys an update, and we'll see how they do for next year.